Welcome to Semper Sometimes with Benny. So um, I have a friend of mine, a fellow Marine um, I've known for probably about 10 years, deployed together. Um, we were never really close, but we we're just, you know, like other Marines, you know, we've known each other. We have friends that are mutual um, and we became Facebook friends on our deployment. Um, you know, like I said, probably saw each other in the chow hall and that was probably the extent of our relationship. Um, but while you know deploying to Afghanistan, coming home, I we've I've always seen her doing things in the veteran community and always you know doing things to help others out and reaching out to ask how people were doing. And um, I remember years ago, you know, there was a marine that needed help, um, so she formed like a GoFundMe and stuff like that. I remember that, and she was always just trying to help out marines and stuff like that. So. Um, and then up to recently, you know, um, her new her new endeavors with her nonprofit and stuff like that. I wanted to get her out here just to kind of introduce herself and be able to tell the audience what their um, what what she has in store for the community and how she can help the veteran community out. So without further ado, welcome and please just introduce yourself and kind of just give us a little bit of background on you. Thank you. Thank you for having me here today as well. And um, so my name is Yahaira Farias, and I'm a Marine Corps veteran. I was in from 2006 to 2012. And uh, I believe we were on a few um, deployments together, right? Uh, yeah, we were, we were in Afghanistan together. Um, and we have a lot of different mutual friends. Um, that we've known because you you were I th if I'm correct you were with the um with the um with the security team right no actually I was so I was motor T um, oh was yeah security, but what what platoon were you with I was with um I deployed with second maintenance battalion um when I was with Red Bank and I was oh. motor T with Red Bank and I know you know like you know Velez yeah. um yeah so we we okay. know a lot of the same people because when okay. did you deploy when did you deploy to afghanistan in 2011 okay so i yeah so I, were you 11 tech one or 11 tech two 11 tech one okay so we were i was 11 tech one so i yeah. was with we we co-mingled with some of the active duty guys and i was in the in third platoon so i don't oh. know what platoon you were in oh okay well yeah see i was i was a record too so besides being motor t and being a truck driver i also had my record license and oh, so, wow. so i got attached to the different platoons out there so i was with second platoon i was with third i was with first yeah <laughs> so, yeah um, they just pretty much sent me with any platoon <laughs> that needed a record <laughs> so and a few other units out there too so. yeah uh, okay. So how how was that experience? Like, how did you? So before we get into your nonprofit and to what you do for the veteran community, um, how was your your six years in the Marine Corps? How did you did you enjoy it? Did you love it? Like, what was your experience? So, um, I I really loved being a Marine. Um, I miss wearing the uniform, of course. Um, you know, there was. There was parts about it that were that were rough, I guess you could say, you know, looking looking back on it, you think, you know, all the articles that come out, sexual harassment, um, politics back in the day, all the things that we all didn't like about being in the Marine Corps. Um, but overall, I would say that um, that my career was was pretty good um, for me because of me, because I was I was strong mentally and because I, I chose to not really focus on the bad and I chose to focus more on how I wanted my Marine Corps career to go. Um, and so with that being said, that's, um, that's how I ended up getting my record license um, because I, I had already gone to MOS school, Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri to be mm -hmm. a truck driver. So, um, so LBSR, LBS, uh, seven tons, MRAPs, Matt V's, um, <laughs> uh, Humvees, all that. And then um, I was pretty motivated. I wanted to do more. I wanted to, to get more licenses. And mm -hmm. so um, when the opportunity came about to go back to, to MOS school to become a wrecker, um, I did that as well. I took that opportunity. Um, then also my unit was certifying um, for hazmat. Um, and not a lot of people were, you know, jumping at the seams to, <laughs> to do hazmat. <laughs> Um, but I, I did that as well. So I also was hazmat certified. And um, so on deployments, I was, 
I, besides being a driver, I was doing uh, the vehicle recoveries as a wrecker. I was uh, doing some refuel missions um, and resupplying some of the fobs as well. Um, so that's uh, that's basically how my Marine Corps career went. It was pretty busy for me and uh, and I loved it. And it went by fast with two deployments because I went to Iraq in 2009 um, and Afghanistan in 2011. Oh, wow. How was how was that experience? Uh, so Iraq, um, that was my first deployment. And I would say as a first time, like deploying Marine, you know, I was pretty nervous and, yeah. and way more, way more scared <laughs> the first <Yeah>. time <laughs> than, uh, than when we went to Afghanistan. Um, I volunteered to go to Afghanistan, but the first one that was like, you're going, you haven't deployed, you're fucking going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was more nerve wracking than anything that really happened. I, Iraq, we had a few incidents. Um, we had some, uh, some IDF, um, we had, you know, some, a few IDs and stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't like Afghanistan. So Afghanistan, every time we were going out on convoys, one of our trucks would hit an IED. Mm -hmm. uh, we were always taking small arms fire, taking sniper fire, um, you know the base got mortared while we were out there and oh, wow. and, and shit just like <laughs> oh yeah I remember that. yeah yeah on camp bastion side yeah 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 so afghanistan was way worse than iraq um but i would say yeah i would say as my first deployment i i was i was uh you know kind of nervous about stepping out of my truck and getting my leg blown off yeah. <laughs> you know until you get over that and you're just like yeah i'm just gonna jump out and <laughs> not even look <laughs> Yeah, a little complacent. Um, so <laughs> what what made you join the Marine Corps? Like, where did that come from? Was it like a childhood dream? Like, what was it that made you join the Marine Corps? And what, like, how did you get to the reserve program? Why did you do Motor T? Like, what, what kind of did all that? Well, uh, I grew up in a poor neighborhood. Um, and I didn't really have, like, much choices, really. You know, and I didn't know what I was going to do going to college. I didn't know that I was ready for college. So um, pr yeah, pretty early on, I would say I planned to, um, to join ROTC. I joined the Air Force ROTC, which was what they had at my high school, at Western okay. High School. And, um, and through that, I got to see a little bit of, you know, what that was like, a little bit of what um, the military, I guess, was going to have um, in, in place. Uh, it kind of prepares you a little bit but, but then um, I started kind of seeing the commercials, you know, the army commercials, the Marine commercials, uh, the recruiters would come to, to Western and they'd try to recruit us. And as soon as I saw a Marine Corps commercial, it's like, I, I, I thought I was gonna join the army. That's really all I knew about. I knew the army, the Air Force, the Navy, I didn't really know about Marines. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then when I saw a commercial, I, I was just like, whoa, you know, like that, it just caught me it it just caught my attention mm -hmm. and I thought you know that's that's the uniform that I want to wear and then I spoke with a few recruiters too that were coming to our competitions for ROTC and yeah and it was it was just before I knew it that that was it I was like I was telling everyone you know, I'm, I'm joining the Marine Corps you know this is what I'm going to do and I, I think I did that so that I would not be able to back out <laughs> so <laughs> like if I tell everyone then, I, then I'm yeah. stuck I can't go back <laughs> how did how did your family feel about it oh man yeah so I'm from a Hispanic background my parents they were immigrants from Mexico they okay. um, they came yeah they came here to try to make a better life for themselves and for me and my sister and they became citizens um pretty much almost within a few years of moving here. So that was really fortunate for them uh, during the Reagan administration, they got their citizenship. And um, well, our background, our cultural background back then, uh, women did not join the military. Uh, yeah. Women do not do stuff like that. Like, you know, it's, it, it was kind of looked down upon mm -hmm. um, for, for women to be in those kinds of jobs. And, and it was a shock for sure to my parents. My, my mom and dad were, they, they weren't happy about it. My mom was more so sad. Um, uh, I think she kind of expected it though, because I was kind of rebellious and I was kind of like the black sheep of my family. <laughs> um, so just to put things in perspective before, um, before I was a good kid, a good ROTC kid and, and doing all this cool stuff, um, I, 
I was not doing so great. Um, I ended up in juvie in middle school, um, oh, wow. breaking and entering. Um, I was ditching school a lot. Um, the path that I was going down just seemed like a path that was all too familiar back in the day for um, people in my family, like in, mm. um, either like the like the women would either end up young and pregnant and dropping out of school, or the guys would end up in like the in the, the legal system, right? And it's just and that's it was unfortunate, you know, that poor kids from Hispanic backgrounds during that time. That's what was that was kind of the thing. Mm-hmm. But luckily, um, I I don't know. I just I, I I guess I decided I wanted to try this ROTC thing, and I really feel like that's what kind of pulled me out of heading down that bad direction. And, and my family, the having the the strength of them and what they've been through. Yeah. Um, because they were working really hard to to put food on the table and just showing us, you know, what hard work could do to keep us afloat. And I didn't want them having to pay for my college, like, because I know that they would try, they would do anything and everything, give the shirt off their backs for me and my sister to be able to go to college. And so, so really like the Marine Corps, and that was like, that was the answer for me. I, I didn't want to go to college. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't want my family to pay for my school when they still have my little sister to worry about. So mm-hmm. I wanted them to be able to, to afford to send it, send at least her to college, you know, mm-hmm. and, and then I could figure it out on my own. I was pretty independent. I was yeah. pretty stubborn. <laughs> so. so was there a reason why you went reserves versus going active duty? Uh, you know, I think it was because I, I wanted to still be home. I wanted to still try to have somewhat of a, of a life. I wasn't sure about going full blown active duty yet. Um, Mm -hmm. I I think it's been so long now. Um, but I do remember that I wanted to do a specific job. Um, I want, and I wanted to stay in Vegas. Um, so I wanted to do the combat, uh, motion photographer job. And um, I remember them telling me that they weren't going to allow me to take that job because that would require me to travel to California as a reservist. Um, And they were having too many Marine reservists who were skipping out on drill if it wasn't within their same vicinity, if it wasn't within within their same city. So then they were like, well, the only options here for Marine Corps reserves are infantry and motor (laughs) team. And and during that time, female were not allowed so that wasn't a choice for me so Um, how do you now now looking back at it are you happy that you did motor t did you enjoy your time as more it sounds like you did but did you enjoy your time as motor t definitely definitely um i'm happy that i didn't go in on an open contract i'm (laughs) grateful looking back that i wasn't a a cook or admin not to say anything down about those (laughs) jobs we love you guys (laughs) yeah yeah we need you (laughs) (laughs) um no but I I love motor t I love being a truck driver I I would say that that job that MOS in the Marine Corps is one of the most independent jobs that you can have 100 percent and it's so versatile you do everything you do literally you learn so many MOSs because you have to like you have to be able to you know do you know deal with supply you have to be able to hump you have to be able to deal with communications you have to be able to know how to use a bft a blue a blue force tracker like you have to know every ins and outs of all of it um so so tell us a little bit about how you got into so first of all tell us what you're you're in the middle of creating a nonprofit, or you already own the nonprofit. like tell us a little bit about that no no so actually um i i don't own a nonprofit. oh okay i apologize no, that's all right. Um, so you might have gotten that from some of my posts on social media. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm affiliated with uh, two nonprofits who okay. sponsor me. Yeah. So I run a oh, yoga. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I run a yoga program for um, for both of these two nonprofits, and they sponsor veterans and first responders um, so that they can be able to take restorative yoga sessions with me. Um, oh. Yeah, in my home yoga studio. So I, I converted the uh, downstairs portion of my home into a yoga studio. And this is where I take veterans, first responder clients, and, and I teach them trauma recovery yoga. I teach recovery yin yoga. And, it, and it's all a focus on mental health as well as physical health. So how did you how did you get involved in that? Like, how did, like where did this 
the love of first of all i would assume you have a love for yoga in order for you to become you know such an involved person and i would i would hope you don't hate it (laughs) um you know that's a that's a funny story because (laughs) because i was the typical you know marine jarhead and i was I was like, uh, yoga, like the fuck? Like, I don't want to do yoga. <laughs> Sorry, hopefully I can cuss on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, no, you can. Because that's, that's my mentality. I think it's like, for me, for me, it's not, it's not so much that. It's like, I hear people do it and I hear phenomenal things about it. But the, for me, it's like, I don't have the patience in life to just sit idly. So like when you told me the other day, like, all you need is a chair. I'm like, I'm not going to sit for that long. Like, what do you, what do you mean? Like, this, is, this already sounds horrendous. But no, no. it's much, you know, it's much better once you actually just start, once you just start doing it. Um, but yeah, I have that exact main mentality, the same thing. So I get it when people, when especially veterans and first responders, like a lot of them have that mentality. And so I get it when they're like, uh, I don't need yoga, whatever. Well, you may not need it, but it's still going to be good for you. And once you start and, and you get into it, you'll notice the changes with your body, like that, that the yoga stretches does for your body and then you'll notice the changes that it does for you mentally with the breath work um with being mindful with meditation and slowly over time by through noticing those changes that's what really starts to like you know kind of sink in your head and and change change the idea of of yoga because uh for me i was kind of forced into yoga you know um, okay I, <laughs> yeah, let me let me tell you the story. Yeah. <laughs> um, how does how does one get forced into yoga? <laughs> hey, listen, you can't leave the house until you've done the the, the dog pose for 10 minutes straight. <laughs> okay. I, I wish it was it had been that fun. Um <laughs> but uh no, I uh so I got out of the Marine Corps um in 2012. And um, like a lot of other veterans, I had some issues transitioning. Um, so I was in the VA system um, back to back and, and I was being seen for mental health issues. And um, I had a few uh, moments, a few dark moments where um, I wanted to kill myself, where I tried to kill myself. And <clears throat> sorry, it's like, uh, it's been a while since I thought about that, but yeah and so these these dark moments um they they kind of they led me to towards searching for this adrenaline this fear factor this this thing in my life that would make me feel like alive again like make me feel badass like what the marine corps did for us like make us feel like i don't know just alive right like like you're you're a part of something bigger like more badass and and so in that search so I was found, it i'm sorry to interrupt you but so was it like a, a like a lack of purpose that you were feeling i guess that kind of what was going on like yeah yeah lack of purpose was was definitely it lack of purpose um lack of camaraderie lack of you know not having any other marines around me that deployed with me mm-hmm. um because I, I was in contact with some Marines that that were here through Las Vegas, but it's it's not the same, you yeah. know, and yeah, I'm sure you know, it's like, it's hard to talk about deployment even now, even with other Marines, unless we deploy together. And then all yeah, of a sudden- Yeah, and especially because now <laughs> it's so far and in between, like a lot of people haven't deployed. So like when I, like when I was, I, I, when I got back with, with Velez, um, me and her were the only two motor team Marines who deployed and all of the rest of them everyone else that we deployed with are gone they're no longer in the marine corps or they're at other units they're not at red bank so like me and her connected on that level like we've been friends for 12 years but like we were finally back in the unit together so like just talking to each other was so different because like even now like you're talking about like i'm i'm still in the reserves but i work for where a civilian company for recruiting and I don't have that camaraderie. Like I like the jokes that they say, I'm just like, haha. Or like, like I can't make veteran jokes or anything like that. You know, like there was one day, like when all the stuff was going on, one of my uh one of the people that I work for, he looked over at me and he was like, Hey, Ben, he was like, Doug, you you've been to Afghanistan, right? He goes, How was it? I was like, Oh, beautiful place, man. Great, great beaches, great. And he and he looked at me and he was like, 
and and everybody in the room like they were all females they all looked at me like i was crazy <laughs> and then like two or three no one but no one said anything like they were just like oh okay and then like three or four days later my director comes up to me and she's like hey doug i have a question i was like what's up she was like were you serious the other day i was like no lauren i wasn't i was like no i wasn't serious that that afghanistan's a beautiful place i was like i was like yeah sometimes like you know the sunrise is pretty nice but i was like it's not really beauty it's like there's nothing to see there i was like there's no beaches and and i was it was just funny but like they didn't get the joke but i guess i guess at the same time it's like why would you joke about that i don't know but but yeah no dang that's that's crazy that they, they didn't get that <laughs> no they were like wait a minute is he crazy was it really nice and i was like yeah you should go see it it's a good tour spot you uh you gotta introduce them to that <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so um so so when you were getting out you did have some some issues going on um and you said it was due to the fact of like kind of like just not having a feeling like was it like just what was it do you think if you don't mind me asking yeah, I felt um, I felt lack of purpose for sure. That was definitely that was definitely it. Lack of purpose. Um, I felt like even the people who did want to know about my service, like they like why 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 should I talk about it? Like there's people that went through worse than I did. There's people you know there's you know there's all sorts of all sorts of comparisons. And so I felt like my story and what I went through and like what I experienced in the Marine Corps didn't matter. And so if it didn't matter, then I really had nothing to talk about with people. I had nothing to be proud of. I had nothing to really um, distinguish me, you know, to really to prove what I spent the last six years of my life doing, you know, in mm. and that left a void, you know, it, yeah. it really makes the person feel like, well, like, who am I? What am I? Where, where am I going? What's the point? Like, you know? Yeah. Now, did you, um, I know one of the reasons why you said you had joined the Marine Corps was because of college. Did you end up going to college? Did you ever use your GI Bill for anything? I, I did, yeah. Yeah, so um, so I did end up using my GI Bill, and um, it's been an on and off process. Um, so I've had to take some time off here and there and some breaks, uh, but I'm, I'm still currently using my GI Bill, and I, and I plan to, to use it. I think, you know, those benefits are afforded to us and that we should definitely use them and take advantage mm -hmm. of them if only to better ourselves if only to keep learning and have knowledge mm -hmm. um and so yeah i'm definitely still using that um but to kind of come back to yeah go back to where we were i'm sorry we <laughs> <It's> okay. um, <laughs> so you were forced into so you were having issues with mental health and how did you fall into or jump into the yoga so they did mention it. Um, they did mention it at the VA. I guess they were starting to have yoga, but um, I was still in that. Okay, well, that's great. Um, but no, I don't care. <laughs> like, um, and then, and then, uh, so I like I was talking about how I had to find a purpose. I had to find this thing that made me feel um, like kind of like how the Marine Corps did. Yeah. Well, I got into motorcycle riding. I ended up uh, getting a Honda CBR 600 RR, a little crotch rocket. And, and I started riding motorcycles out here in Vegas. Um, I like rode with other groups. I got into a motorcycle group out here and I was like the secretary and <laughs> <laughs> so I was basically the scribe. <laughs> and, uh, and that was fun. That was that man. That was, oh, man, getting talking about motorcycle riding it just it that was the only thing that I found in life that has made me feel anything like the Marine Corps like being in the Marine Corps what was it like the camaraderie was it the thrill of the ride like what was it I've never rode a motorcycle so I have no idea it's all of it it's it's you know and, and I wanted did you want to say it is dangerous and I'll that'll lead into you'll you'll see we'll get there we'll get there, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we'll get there but uh um yeah it's it's all of it <clears throat> from the adrenaline that you get from writing from the people that you meet they're just like people in in the marine corps or in the military like they all talk shit to each other and it's the mm -hmm. way that you talk with each other it's it was like it wasn't like oh they're civilians you nasty thing don't talk yeah to <laughs> <laughs> like how it normally is when you go into civilian world and you're like oh these are 
these are nasty civilians, you know, or they they don't get you because you were in the military because you're in the Marine Corps. But no, it's it was the camaraderie right off the bat um, with these people who ride motorcycles. They just they don't care. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then you're riding together, you're experiencing these adventures um, and and you're man and you're 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 experiencing this adrenaline there's all these times where you could die um where people crash all the time and so then you're taking care of each other you're looking out for one another um you're most of the time riding with partners or in groups so that in case one of you does go down or something happens you know you can get help right away um and so it very much is is very very similar to being a part of a unit um in, in the structure of it, the way that we ride our motorcycles when it's group group ride, ridings, um, and it's been a while now, so um, forgive me if I don't, you know, speak use the right the, lingo. Yeah, use the right lingo anymore. But but we did have like hand signals and stuff, and to convoy our motorcycles around. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. That uh, riders have their own little signal that they like signal to other riders <laughs> to you know just be like, hey man, like I see you, you know, be safe. <laughs> and. So that that was um, incredible, and I loved that. And I would say that held me over for for three years. For three years that I was riding right after the Marine Corps, um, until I got in a horrific mor- motorcycle accident. Oh wow! Yeah. Um, so I was I was riding my motorcycle um, here in Las Vegas, and it was on Las Vegas Boulevard and Tropicana over on the Strip. I was at the front of a red light and as soon as that light turned green I took off like a bat out of hell like I because my lane was clear and because that's what we do because we ride all fast (laughs) and so and so I took off um there's traffic in other lanes but I'm like okay my lane is clear and so I had taken off all of a sudden my lane is not clear anymore I've got this car that's shooting across diagonally and I've got uh, seconds, like I've got seconds, but everything all of a sudden slows down. It's like slow motion. So this car that shot out diagonally, it was supposed to have turned right. It was in a right turn lane. If they would have turned right, they would have not been in my lane, but they shot across three lanes of traffic trying to get over um, to the far left lane. And because there was traffic on either side of the of the the street, the um, the lane, my lane, there was yeah. traffic on either side. It blocked him diagonally, and so where I would normally, I could like I was searching for other places to go. You start searching, yeah. reflexes kick in. There was nowhere for me to go because he had blocked every little crevice that I could have possibly taken and so I'm going I'm like probably 45 50 miles an hour now right and and it's and like I said I have these seconds to think about what I'm going to do and the only thing that I could think to do um before I hit and before I blacked out because everything went black um so I'm assuming it's when I hit is my body instinctively and I just kind of turned over to the right so then so my hand my hands are on the handlebars and I turn and so that in turn makes the bike kind of slide Um, and so I slid um, with my bike and and turning um, more towards the right so all the damage was taken to the right side versus the front, which uh, in which saved me um, after the fact, it saved me that I did that, that I tried to kind of slide, I guess. Um, it, <clears throat> and so I blacked out, everything went black, and then I wake up on the ground um, there at the accident, the scene of the accident, um, and and I didn't know that I was broken and bleeding. Um, I'm just on the ground. I can't move my leg. Like I can feel my left leg. And I can't move my right. So Mm -hmm. I'm kind of, I'm a little nervous. Um, I tried to sit up. I tried to use my hand and I couldn't, like there was pressure immediately in my right hand Mm -hmm. and I couldn't, I could only move my left and I'm trying to get up. So this witness is running over to me and he's like, no, stop, stop moving. And he's like, you broke your arm. And I wanted to look and he goes, don't look, don't look. (laughs) Because he he thought I was going to pass out or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm assuming this is what he thought because yeah. 
my bones were sticking out of my hand. Oh, like they were, yeah, my bones, my arm, they were just sticking out of my arm. Oh. Um, so I had broken my arm. I had broken all my ribs on my right side, um, broke my pelvis. And then, and now I had muscle and nerve damage on to my right arm and mm -hmm. my right leg with a huge indentation in my right leg now from this impact. Um, and I didn't know, and I was internally bleeding as well. Oh my God. So, yeah. And so here I am trying to get up and I'm like asking about my bike. <laughs> like, is my bike okay? <laughs> it's like, it's like being a Marine. Where's my rifle? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, where's my, where's my bike? Is it okay? <laughs> You see the correlation? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's very much how it is with your with your motorcycle. Like, was my bike? Is my bike okay? Okay, that's good. I'm is fine. Good? <laughs> What's that? I said, is she good? Yeah, is she good? <laughs> um, and so I'm so I'm laying here. I don't know what all is wrong with me, but I know something's wrong with me. And this guy's like just keeping me talking while mm -hmm. the ambulance. He told me the ambulance is on their way. Um, then I hear the ambulance, so they weren't too far because um, UMC trauma is very much near the strip. So I was very fortunate from where I had my accident because um, I, I think they were there within like five minutes, five, 10 minutes, but they get there and um, the the firefighters step out. There's firefighters, there's an ambulance. Firefighters step out, the EMT steps out. They're kind of taking a look at me, talking to me. Then they get me ready to switch me over onto the gurney. And so I had been at this point, I'm still like talking to them. I'm still aware of what's going on. I'm still focused on what they're saying. I'm calm. I don't know how, but I was just extremely calm and I'm just talking like I am to you because mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just how I reacted. But yeah, so they, so they pick me up like there's a few of them. They pick me up and they go to move me onto the stretcher and I scream fucking bloody murder. This animal scream that like just comes out of me. I don't even remember. Um, I, I don't know. It all of a sudden just came out. And I guess that's, I felt it all at once. Like mm -hmm. when they moved me and then as soon as they stopped moving me, it, nothing like I, it's, a, it's like, I didn't feel anything anymore. Just the pressure and the adrenaline keeping me going. Yeah. So again, now the EMT girl um, for the ambulance, uh, she starts asking me more questions. She starts asking me questions. Um, I forget what it was, but it's mostly just to determine like how, I guess, how I am and like maybe vitals and all this stuff but she's asking me these questions and I'm answering her very calmly and so it's almost like like and I'll tell you why later on but it's almost like she she thinks that that there's nothing wrong with me besides a broken arm you know that, that because so I was in this ambulance they finally get me inside the ambulance and she's she's been asking me these questions and I slowly start to feel myself fade okay now I know I'm like oh man like I've been able to answer her questions but I feel it I feel like I'm going in this tunnel like I'm going like backwards like in this oh like all of a sudden everything is getting harder I can hear myself talking but I can't you know I can't um I can't speak as, as much. I don't have the energy anymore. I feel myself like losing that energy. And I hear in the background, I hear her and the firefighter starting to argue. And because at this point they closed the doors and we had taken off for the hospital. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't have them turn the lights on the, the ambulance lights and the sound. And he's arguing with her and he's like, well, if it was your family, you would do it. And like, and ba he basically like is telling her, He's, I think, I don't know. He, I just remember him saying, if it was your family or if it was your, that, that you would, you would do it. And all of a sudden he got fed up and frustrated and he goes code, whatever, like code four or code something to the driver. And then I hear the lights and the sound come on. And uh, can she, I remember them arguing. I remember her saying like, don't tell me how to do my job. So like, to me, I'm like, I can't say anything at this point. I'm so weak, but I am awake. I'm aware. I hear them. Yeah. And I'm like, thank you. I'm like in my head, I'm like, thank you. Cause I don't, I don't feel right, man. Like that something. Yeah. Is not right. And I guess she thought I was fine. Or she thought that because I was talking to her so calmly mm -hmm. that like, like, you know, everything, whatever, no big deal. Yeah. That you guys had time. Yeah. And so thank God for him, because later on, I read in the report, like, um, so then I, I basically blacked out as soon as I got to the hospital and like, mm -hmm. I, I died and they had to resuscitate me. Um, oh, wow. It was really bad because I, yeah, I was bleeding internally and, and it was really bad. Um, 
so yeah th yeah thank goodness for that guy um and and for that happening for him being there uh i was in icu and they had to stabilize me for um for a few days first before i could go into surgery um for my pelvis and my arm and and so <clears throat> then once i went through i went through surgeries um and uh, eventually i was able to get let out of the hospital um i had to be taken care of at home so i had to i had to go back to living with my parents because i couldn't take care of myself i had to be on bed rest and i couldn't even get up to go to the bathroom i had to use the bathroom in a bedpan and just to put things in perspective <laughs> like for me uh, I've always, I was always a very independent, strong, um, stubborn uh, Marine, <laughs> like I had that mentality, right? And so for somebody else to take care of me, like that's a no, that's, that's a yeah, no. Yeah, and especially go as far as to having lay in bed with a bedpan and not yeah. being able to do those things for yourself. Yeah, yeah. So how, then, how long did that last? Uh, so, so with the bedpan, I'd probably say about, about a few weeks uh, before I progressed. And then I was able to, to be able to sit and get in and out of a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. uh, now I still couldn't move my right leg, um, because it was still healing. I had an external, um, fixator. So an external fixator is they, they had two ginormous screws that were screwed into my pelvis on each side sticking out of my skin and these screws were attached to like a bar um, and this was all fixated in order to keep my pelvis from moving and to and to allow it to heal and then there was another like big screw um in on the back side to going through the back so total three ginormous screws holding my pelvis together um, and so I wasn't able to wear like pants or shorts. I had to wear like these big long skirts <laughs> all the time. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it was it was a really really life changing experience. Like I was I was really angry, really bitter. I didn't appre I did not like being taken care of. I did not want to be taken care of. Like um, I remember the first time when I was still in the hospital. The first time a, a nurse had to come and she had to uh, sponge bath me. I, I, I just, I cried. I cried and I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed for myself. I was embarrassed for her. I apologized to her. I was like, I'm so sorry that, you know, that basically that you have to do this. You have to wash my naked body because I can't, you know, like I was just, it was to me, it was like just unfathomable that someone else, you know, some stranger is washing me, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> And that was uh, that was really hard. That was really hard to go through. Um, and then to my family, um, for, for my family to take care of me, because uh, because of how angry I was too. Like I I know I, I was lashing out and I was taking things out on them. And um, I was on morphine, and so so I didn't really feel too much pain um, during during that time. On and off I did. I'd get nauseous. Um, on and off some pains. Um, it was more so like nerve wracking having to recover from that, um, having to start to put pressure on the right leg again and learn how to walk again, eventually once, once I progressed to that. Um, <clears throat> and so, so from that, once I started progressing and, and I was good enough to start walking like with a, with like a, a with a walker, with a walker. And, um, I, Actually, before that, before that, so before I was walking with a walker, I was still in the wheelchair. Um, I had my, my, I had my parents take me to my house. At this point, I could get myself in and out of the wheelchair, so I could go to an to a bathroom and not have to use a bedpan. So I had my parents take me to my house, and I, uh, I told them, I, oh, I just want to pick up some things. I want us to get a few things from my house, and. And so they were under the impression that we were going to go there, <clears throat> pick up my things, and then take me back home with them where they could take care of me, you know, because they didn't mind. They're my family. Like, you know, yeah. even I'm being a dick and I hate life <laughs> at this point. Um, but, but, uh, so we get there and so we're grabbing all these things and then we're about to leave and I'm in the wheelchair and I'm like, I'm not going anywhere. Like I'm staying right here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm staying in my house. I'm not leaving. And they're like, my dad and my mom, they, my dad started crying. He started crying and, oh man, I can, you know, I feel bad for putting them through that, but I just, 
you know, you just, you're stubborn. You're this Marine. You're like, you just want to get back to your sense of normalcy and, and yeah. And so, so my dad started crying and they're like, how are we going to leave you here? You know, how are you going to take care of yourself? You're in a wheelchair. (laughs) Um, and, uh, and but I, I told them I'm like well you guys can bring me food you guys can bring me you know groceries but I'm I'm not leaving I'm staying here, mm-hmm. and so so I stayed I stayed home and 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 I was stubborn and I basically um, did the rest of my recovery here they would pick me up and they would take me to my um, my physical therapy <clears throat> and my appointments, um, but yeah it was I was I was very depressed I was isolating. Um, I, I was self-medicating, um, because by this point, um, my body was starting to reject the, um, the morphine. And so as soon as I started to, um, as soon as I threw, I threw up like from the morphine, um, I cold Turkey stopped. And then I realized, oh shit, I still have pain. (laughs) And so then I started taking it again and I couldn't, my body couldn't handle it. And so I just, I had to just cold Turkey it. And so then I was dealing with um, morphine withdrawals at home alone in bed. Um, <laughs> my whole body like shakes and shivering. I'm covered with ton like all my blankets and it's oh, like wow. like 105 degrees outside in Vegas. And I, I'm like, I can't control these like these shakes. And yeah, um, so, so I dealt with that. I got through that thankfully. Um, and yeah. Uh, and this, and so how that got me to yoga. Um, so I have a question. Yeah. yeah. While all of this was going on, were you having issue? Was like, were you still having issues with the the separation of the Marine Corps and all of those things? Like, was it all kind of like conjumbled together? I know that's a word that I just made up, but <laughs> <laughs> I like, like it. was it was it all like kind of like forming together for this to just be a really spiral out of control type thing um I I think parts parts were yeah like conjumbled (laughs) parts of it um I know I was I was struggling uh I I did have a lot of issues but at this point I was more focused on like wanting to heal and wanting to get out of this chair and go back to my normal life but yeah I'm sure you know my PTSD my depression my uh, I was diagnosed with major depressive disorder through the VA too and I um, was diagnosed with uh, TBI with traumatic brain injury Um, so so I'm sure that all of that didn't help you know (laughs) Um, yeah yeah I could I I I know I had some some dark times um but once I got off the morphine, I started self-medicating with marijuana, um, and it worked for me. I mean, I'm not saying to everybody out there that to, to do that, but it worked for me. I stayed off the opioids. I didn't want to be on pills, and during that time, that's what helped me. Um, but then uh, I will say that after after that, I couldn't anymore because it just made me more paranoid, and it exacerbated my my PTSD symptoms. So I had to stop and find something different. Um, and so that's when I got into CBD because um, I'm, I'm a CBD affiliate now too. So um, I, I promote CBD. Um, I use it in my yoga um, to help heal people, to help with pain and with uh, inflammation. Um, so so, so that, was a, that was a way that I dealt with my pain as well. And, and once I was not in pain once I'm not in pain then I don't I don't take the CBD I don't take anything I just do my yoga do my exercises um so it's something that I I choose to do um on and off to help with pain okay yeah um so we keep drawing back I'm sorry so how do you <laughs> so how did you get into the yoga <laughs> yeah okay so while I was uh um being going through to physical therapy, um, seeing all these doctors, uh, the one common factor that everyone was talking about, you know, from the VA doctors to my physical therapy doctors, um, to my orthopedic surgeon, um, they were all saying, you should do yoga, you should do yoga. So, so at this point, I'm like, God damn, everybody's telling me to do yoga. So I guess I should do it, (laughs) you know, stop being so stubborn. And um, they're all saying that it it helps to heal. It helps to heal, not just you mentally, but physically. And I'm like, okay, at this point, I'm all about healing physically because I want to get out of the chair. (laughs) Yeah. 
so um, so I started what so once I progressed enough to where I was no longer in the wheelchair, I was able to get out and, and start um, using a cane or using a walker using whatever and I, I could be out of the wheelchair. Um, I started doing yoga at home because I was like, I'm not about to go to a yoga class. Like, I don't even, I didn't believe in it. I mean, I was this, you know, angry Marine or whatever. <laughs> and I, uh, I didn't think I would fit in, you know, to the yoga land. Um, and so I looked up free yoga on YouTube and, and through these free yoga classes, um, Yoga with Adrian, that was one of my favorites. That's what that's one of my favorites, but it's free, it's on YouTube. Um, I started just doing basic stretches, very basic, because at first everything was painful. You know, I couldn't even sit cross-legged for I don't know, like six months or longer after I had supposedly fully recovered, you know, enough to oh, walk. Wow. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah, I wasn't really fully recovered. There was still a lot of pain and injuries, but I was able to walk. So, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so I, yeah, it was that much pain with just the basic movements, you know, something that we did every single day in boot camp, like, or not every single day, but like, you know, when we were cleaning yeah. weapons and yeah. sitting on the ground, <laughs> sitting yeah. Indian style, I couldn't shooting be, on the rifle range. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so um, so I had to do the most basic stretches off the side of the bed, just stretching like my arms, um, stretching from the waist up, and then eventually progressing to the ground and trying to do what I could through the pain, um, pushing through. And I started to do it almost on the daily um, because of the healing factor. Not that I really felt anything at first and not that I even believed in it, but because I knew that that was what I could get out of it, that there's a possibility that, hey, this could make me better, you know? So, so I kept at it and, and one, one day it just clicked. It's something happened where I felt like I was in my body, like I was present with my body, present in the moment, like all of a sudden the ground magnified because I was looking down, I was like in do down dog and I was stretching and, and I don't know, like I was following her breathing techniques that she was talking about through the end and something changed. Like, I, I don't even know how to explain it, but it was all of a sudden like, like everything around me was magnified. And, and like all of a sudden I understood, like all of a sudden I felt what everybody was talking about. I felt how it was helping my body. I understood how the breathing was making me more present. Um, and and that's that's what got me hooked. That's what that's what made me think, okay, I need, I need to investigate this more. I need to maybe look into becoming a yoga instructor, you know, and and I had friends during that time who um, who had recommended me to go look into this workshop, this 20 hour trauma recovery yoga workshop. And so I did, OK, they said, you don't have to teach. You don't have to, you know, do whatever. You can just go and take it for your benefit. So so they made it seem really, really, really easy, like do what you can when you can and, you know, skip what you want to skip or take breaks. So that was really, that was really nice because I needed to hear that. Um, and so I did, I, I got into trauma recovery yoga. I went to the workshop. I, I started doing this stuff. I was still up and down in my mentality. You know, some days I, I would be like, oh yeah, this is awesome. I feel it. Other days I'd be like, you know, like, uh, yoga, you know, yeah, okay, yeah, but, um, <laughs> but over, over time, I really loved, like, what it not only did for me, but more so what I could do for other people once I started teaching it, because seeing other people, the changes with them, hearing them talk about, like, thanking me, like, talk about how much it was helping them, um, that's really what did it for me, I was like, okay, I'm in, like, this is it, like, I want to do this for a living, I want to teach yoga, to, yeah. every, to everybody anybody who wants to yeah yeah because i know i know one of the times i thought about like doing it it, it was when uh, i was reading david goggins book can't hurt me and he talks about how he had like an issue with his psoas muscle and he started stretching and he didn't even know this was a muscle that existed and then all of a sudden he found out that he had this huge issue in his body and it was because he hadn't ever stretched this muscle and then he ended up getting huge into it. And, you know, like I know like Joe Rogan does it and certain people do it all the time. But yeah, I've never, 
like one of the guys that I went to, um, he was in Red Bank. He, <clears throat> him and his friends started a nonprofit. It's called Recalibrate. And what they do is they do like once a month, they do meetups um, for veterans. And it'll either be like a CrossFit workout where like a CrossFit company will let you do the workout at their place. They'll set the whole work up. Uh, or they do like, um, I think this past Sunday was like a yoga meeting where it's either you go there personally or you can do it virtually with them. And like, I've, I just haven't been able to make it out to one of them. Um, but yeah, it's something that I've, I've, I've thought about, like me and my wife talk about it, but it's like, it's just like, I, I just think about it. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> You should, you should. It's, it's going to be worth it. I think, I think you'll like it, especially doing it with other vets. Like, mm -hmm. um, it can be really fun. You know, it can be if, if there's vets that are running it and they, you know, with the vet sense of humor, it, it can be hilarious. So. so what would you, what would you say is, is, um, is the beneficial things that you've seen yourself, like some examples, maybe? Um, okay, so with me, well, I was able to finally get back to my body to what I couldn't do anymore because of the accident. Um, and here's one thing to show how severe it really was. Well, my doctor said they thought I would probably never recover fully or never be able to do the things that I was doing, be as active or be as strong or as flexible or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. When in fact, now after years of yoga, I've been doing yoga since 2019 now. Um, so in two, 2000, oh, actually no longer. So in 2014, because 2014 was my motorcycle accident, but in 2019 was when I decided to become a yoga teacher. Um, so, but so all that time now doing yoga, I feel like my body is stronger, more flexible, and I can do more now than I was before, even, even stronger than when I was in the Marine Corps. And I would say I was a pretty strong woman. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So that, so that's, that's just, uh, that's one benefit. It makes you strong in a very different way. It makes you physically strong in a different way. Um, and once you have control over your breath, you probably hear like Joe Rogan and other guys talk about this in some of their podcasts, uh, especially if they're talking about breath work. Uh, Wim Hof. Wim Hof is. Like yeah, I was. Um, I remember when uh, right before I was getting out of the Marine Corps, uh, I, uh, I was I went on a run with my friend and it was winter. It was like, I think, like January or something. And I was a fucking cold out. And my buddy, uh, my buddy, Gunny, Gunny Ledbetter he just looks over at me and he's like, you've clearly have never heard of Winhoff and you've never watched his YouTube videos. And I'm just like, who the fuck is that? And he's like, he's just looking at me and he's like, dude, just breathe, man. He's like, every, he's like every other step, breathe. He's like, breathe in and relax and breathe. And this gunny, and the funniest thing about this guy, and he'll listen to this episode. The funniest thing I love him. I, me and this guy have a love hate relationship and me and him were talking about this the other day because I thoroughly couldn't stand this guy for years. And I thought that he couldn't stand me, but then now that we're no longer in the same unit, we're no longer together. We talk to each other and we find out that we both actually kind of liked each other. And he looked at me like he was like my father, like a father type figure. Cause he was a gunny and I was a staff sergeant, but um, it was funny because he, I guess he didn't notice this, but the other day I was talking to him and I was like, gunny, I was like, you realize you used to chew me out like hard body. And then you'd be like, Hey, like he, I would walk into his office because he worked in MEPS and he would chew me out and scream and then like a minute later i'd, I'd be like i gunny i gunny and i would just you know be respectful and then i would walk out of his office and then he would go to his door he'd open it he'd be like bennett come in here and then he'd close the door and he'd be like so what's going on brother how is everything and i was just like do you not know what just happened so now mind you this guy who was blasting me screaming at me calling me at three in the morning to chew my ass out now all of a sudden we're running beside each other and he's like hey man just relax and breathe bro and then and i knew that he was an mm like he he dabbled I, I i'm sorry if you take offense to this i don't know if you're a professional but he does mma and he's he does sparring and he fights with different people and um he so I knew he did those things, but then, but just to see him being this totally different person, like, Hey man, just, 
just calm your breathing, bro. Like, it kind of like reminded me of like Matthew McConaughey and Dazed and Confused. Just calm <laughs> down, man. Just breathe, bro. And then he was like, Yeah, man, you should go home and take cold showers every day. And I was just like, Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I did take a couple of cold showers, and I've, I've noticed. I don't know. I, I've, I definitely feel like I've noticed differences. But like, I've only done it for like two days, and I'm like, yeah, this is so great. And then I'm just like, nah, I'll just put the hot water back on. Yeah, yeah, like, the consistency for sure. Yeah, because yeah. like I was looking into stuff like that, and then like I even downloaded like I have it on my phone. I downloaded the Wim Hof app. I did it for like a day and that was it. And then I was going to do it. And my wife, and it was like on the app, it was like, pay $50 for this long. And my wife was like, Doug, if you pay for one more damn thing that you're not going to use, I'm done. And I was just like, but I'm going to use it. He didn't. And then my wife started making fun of me because my wife was like, Doug, he's going to teach you how to breathe. And I was, and I was like, no, it's more than that. Like it's deeper than that. And she was like, yeah, Doug. And it was just out doing funny shit That's but funny. um so what um so what service i know we kind of got into it but what services do you provide and then for any of the listeners that are maybe interested in learning more where could they find you um and where would they be able to to get this kind of help like you received all right um so for the the services that i provide um so i do i teach online yoga right now and it's free and accessible all over the world via Zoom platform. Uh, so I have the information here in front of me. And so basically anyone who is wanting to try this out, we have a free chair yoga class and an upcoming free yin yoga class. So one of them, you do it in a chair. And the other one, you do it on a mat on the floor. Um, yin is where you hold the stretches or the poses for longer, for like longer periods of time to get deeper into the fascia of the muscle. And so these two classes are provided um, through the AARP website. Anyone who would like to join just needs to go to AARP dot org slash nevada slash events dash nv so it, even though it says nevada they they can just go to the aarp okay. website look up their events calendar and it's online so okay a, i'll put i'll just um when we get done with this send it to me and i'll okay. put it i'll put it in my youtube link so everyone can see it and then when i make my facebook up uh, i'll put it in there as well Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. So what, um, do you have anything, any hopes or aspirations for the future? Any like goals that you're trying to pursue to further this or like, what do you, what's going on? Yeah, um, so so just to, just to men mention a little bit um, about what I've done in the past um, with veterans besides this online yoga mm -hmm. is I've actually, I've done free classes for vets in the community here in Las Vegas, uh, free trauma recovery yoga classes. And, um, and I'm also a part of Merging Veterans and Players Organization. And so through them, they provided another online platform for me to be able to teach uh, for free to veterans um, via Zoom. And so I was teaching um, a lot of Zoom classes and that's pretty much how I got my following to go and, and teach in person at Power Yoga and Pilates Studio here in Las Vegas. Um, they, a lot of my, my students that were coming in, they were all, or yeah, all, all of them were basically from MVP, from Merging Vets and Players. So it's combat veterans and athletes <laughs> organization. And so that was interesting when we had um, some civilians in there, because, uh, you know, vets, uh, they say some things sometimes. <laughs> we say some things. <laughs> yeah. And here I am as a yoga instructor, and I'm like, don't mind them. Don't mind them. It's cool. You're good. You, you just stay right there. Do your yoga. Don't mind them. <laughs> no, it's just you never know how other people are going to react, you know, but really, yeah. really, who cares? You got to be yourself and you got to. You, you got to just be happy and 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 do yoga and, and smile and breathe. <laughs> we we had a good time. Um, yeah, I had a lot of good feedback from a lot of the veterans, a lot of the combat vets that were coming, especially over time. The some of the feedback they would give me is that they that with how often they were doing it because they were coming once a week that they were starting to feel better with some of their pain in their body, some of their issues. And, oh wow! Uh, so even just once a week was already. Mm -hmm. once oh, a week. that's awesome 
Yeah, also helped for sleep. So I got a lot of people telling me that they slept like babies right after. Um, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, and sleep and uh, and just like it helped for pain. Um, it was great. It was a great way for us to build more camaraderie um, because after that yoga class, we'd all go out to eat right after. I mean, it's a bunch <laughs> of residents. Come on. <laughs> so, nice. You know, so would you? Go. So it sounds. It sounds like you've definitely found. Uh, you filled that filled that void and, and found your purpose again. Yeah, I, I would say so, definitely. And so, as far as future uh, prospects with this, um, just looking forward to teaching more classes. Um, AARP just gave me a second class. So besides that chair yoga class, I'm now going to teach a yin yoga class, and I'm also starting to teach in person again. So I took a break because of COVID and the restrictions, but now I'm starting to take private yoga uh, sessions. Um, so anyone who wants to can can come to my home yoga studio and take a private yoga session or I'm also mobile I can go to anyone else so if someone's not mobile and they want to do like a chair yoga which is um, for everyone but usually we get a lot of seniors a lot of people who are not as mobile um, a lot of vets who aren't as mobile then I'll go out to them and I'll do chair yoga and so for future prospects I just want to be able to provide more yoga classes um, to more people just make it more accessible whether awesome. online or in person that's awesome that's awesome so um so i guess the, the the last question that i would ask you would just be um do you have anything that maybe you want to share with us before we kind of just end this um do you have any last words or anything that you want to say to anybody out there or anybody that maybe has gone through it which you've gone through or maybe when you were in your darkest times anything that you you know would have said to yourself back then if you could you know have that moment to do that yeah um you know definitely something i would have wanted someone to tell me like another combat veteran or someone who had been through you know what i'd been through in the marine corps um i would have liked for them to tell me um you know it's okay to reach out it's okay to talk about this to other people like go you know talk about these things to people who are in that same space though because when you go and you try to be vulnerable and you try to talk about the things that are going on with you and it's not in a safe envi environment you know if they it's with a vet that's maybe not healed enough and they're they're they don't want to hear it they don't want to talk about it they just want to bullshit which is fine or they just want to you know talk, shoot the shit you got to find that space with other people who are like-minded, who are also trying to heal, who are willing to hold that space for you to have these conversations. Like, what can we do to better ourselves? What can we do to move forward, to get out of this anger, this bitterness, this sadness, and to try to just help ourselves in continuing to move forward. So I, I wish somebody had told me that. And I wish someone had told me, like, take advantage of the free resources that are out there. Just because it's free does not mean that it is not good. Because there's people like me out there who are making those connections, who are getting this stuff for you guys for free because we want you to do it. Not because it doesn't have value. It has tons yeah. of value. But we want to provide it for you guys for a reason, for free, like so that you guys will come and do it or spread the word to somebody who might need it. And someone who's isolating, someone who's depressed, you know, someone who just needs to hear people on a screen or watch another veteran, you know, who's teaching yoga to someone. Like I tell people all the time, I'm like, just get on screen, just hear it, listen to it in the background, watch it. You can even keep your video off. You don't want people to see you, but just get into it that way, little by little. And then eventually you're, you're going to, you're going to want to do it because you'll see other vets there. You'll, you know, you'll see how much everyone else gets into it. And that's kind of motivating itself too. Um, and uh, I'd also like to, you know, say thank you and do a little quick shout out to the, the organizations that are sponsoring me because they're doing this for veterans. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So 22 warrior suicide prevention foundation, um, the founder is Bill Emmel, and uh, he is one of the organizations that sponsored me, one of the nonprofits. Um, I believe he was a, oh man, see if I get this wrong, he was an Ar Ar Army Ranger. I want to say he was a Ranger. Okay. Um, and, th and then there was, there's also Race to Erase the 22, uh, Debbie Burgos and her husband, Bill Burgos. They also um, are another organization that sponsors veterans and first responders to get free 
healing yoga in the community in Las Vegas. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, thank you to them. Um, and thank you to you for doing what you're doing. And thank you for coming out on the on the show, podcast, whatever you want to call it. Um, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, cause I think it's, you know, a huge reason why I'm doing videos and, and doing these things is just for people like I've known you for 11 years and I've never heard any of these things. Um, because we're, we're friends on Facebook, you know, we're not, we, we never really had a huge relationship, but it makes me realize like how many other thousands of people I'm friends with on Facebook that I probably know nothing about. Um, and just getting your story out there for other other Marines, other female Marines, people who may or may be thinking about joining the military. There's just so many things that, you know, go on and, and people just don't know them. Um, and, and especially with everything going on in the world right now, um, it's good to hear, you know, the positive things that are going on for veterans and the positive things that people are doing for veterans. Um, so thank you so much um, for this opportunity. And uh, I really appreciate your time and I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thank you. I appreciate being here too. Thank you so much for this opportunity and look forward to hearing from you again sometime. All right. Definitely. Thank you so much. All right. Take care.